I hated the idea of religion and Christianity because I felt like it was d dangerous to think there's a God who's going to keep us safe when bad things happen. Mm -hmm. And so I hated that. And so if somebody would tell me something's a sin, I would say, well, I'm going to do that because you're not going to control me because I thought that's what it was for. You tell somebody it's a sin so that you can control them. Mm -hmm. And so I would go do that. But the thing is that sin, the Bible, the truth is, the Bible says sin leads to death. And we don't recognize that sin is addressing the death of our souls, like mm -hmm. it, it causes that. And sure. so by the time I was 16, I was worn out and tired in my own sin, in my own, the way that I had been slowly killing myself from the inside anyway. And so I remember that day, and there was a bunch of different things that had happened. My grandfather had had a heart attack earlier that, that week. And I had been kicked out of my house, was living with my grandparents. And when my grandfather had the heart attack, of course, I took, took it all on myself and said, oh, this is my fault. And my grandmother had even gotten an argument with me about it. She, had say, and she was saying, um, if you stop getting in trouble at school, you need to listen to what we're telling you. You're not, you're not, you're not obeying us. Um, you're making things harder. And what my grandmother was really trying to tell me was stop being so selfish. Your actions affect the people around you. And what you're doing is not just affecting you. It's affecting our whole house. So mm -hmm. you need to quit being mm -hmm. selfish. And what I took from it and twisted it was I said, oh, he, he would be better without you, mm -hmm. which was a lie mm -hmm. because if he was stressed out because of what I was doing, it was because he loved me. Yep. He wouldn't have cared if he didn't love me. Sure. So the truth is I twisted that in my own thinking and made it seem like a noble reason for me to die, for me to kill myself. So that's what you planned? Yes, sir. What happened? So that next day I came home from school early and I was supposed to, my grandmother was supposed to be at the hospital, which she wasn't. She happened to be home at the time and already interrupting my process. And she noticed that something was wrong with me and began to, you know, say, what's wrong with you? And I wouldn't talk to her. And she said, you know what? You're going to go to church tonight. And it was almost like an, a punishment for me not wanting to talk to her because she knew I didn't want to go to church. So she said, you are going to church. And you know why? Because you're in my house and you're going to do what I say. And she just knew, you know, <laughs> how to fight with you until she could get her way. And, and it was it was, I've known some grandmothers <laughs> like that. <laughs> it was really important for me. Obviously, that day, I would not have made it through mm -hmm. if she had not fought for that moment because I ended up going to church, sitting in the back, hating everybody in the room. And the man began to preach, the preacher, and he, he began to tell my life story like I was the only one in the room. And when he got to the end of his sermon, he began to cry and say, there's a suicidal spirit in the room. And I remember thinking, this is weird. <laughs> and then he said, please come up here and let us pray for you because God has a plan for your life and he doesn't want you to die tonight. And I say that in the front of the book because I know somebody else needs to hear that too. You know, God has a plan for your life and he doesn't want you to die tonight.